Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a custom controller in an ASP.NET application. My name is Shad Sluter and I work at Grand Canyon University as an instructor for computer programming. In this series of videos that you're watching, we're working on using ASP.NET to create websites using the C-Sharp language. And so in this video, which is early in the series, we're going to show you how to work with controllers and custom views in a website. So this app will be very simple. We're going to start with the default app, as you can see here. We have three pages that are already defined for us. But I'm going to add a new route, and so I'll put a slash and the word test and press enter and see what happens. So we're going to have a very simple web page that shows a message that says, this is your first page in your MVC app. So let's get started. So here we are at the beginning of the uh, process here. I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to create an MVC project. So choose Create New Project. I'm going to search for ASP.NET. And I want to make sure that I'm choosing C Sharp and click Next. I'm going to name mine as App2, and I'm going to make sure that I'm checking the most recent version of .NET Framework. I'm going to start with the MVC starter page and no authentication and choose create. Now when you first create a project you can look in here in the folder called views and you can see that we have three different pages that are already started. We have about, contacts, and index. The program that chooses between these three is called the controller. So let's go look in the controllers area and see what there is. Home controller. So you can see the controller has three different functions called action result. One is for index, one is for about, one is for contact. Index and home are the same thing. Another important part to an app is in this folder called app start and the route config file. So the route config file controls which controller is going to get the action. Now we're going to create our own custom controller. So let's go to the controllers folder, right click and choose add a new controller. So I'm going to select the idea called empty and choose add. Instead of default controller I'm going to name it test controller and choose add. Okay so now we have a controller and it is using the action result index as its default action. Now this controller will never be called unless the route config is actually set up to run it. So the point of this exercise is to show you how these are designed. So I'm going to copy this controller and paste it and keep a copy of it around. So I'm going to comment out the original. And now we're going to change this one. So now I'm going to name this controller as test. And for the URL, I'm going to erase everything that's inside the quotes. And I'm going to put in here test and put in a message called print message. The controller name is called test. The action is going to be called print message. I do not want to have any ID names or numbers associated with this controller, so I'll delete those. So this is going to be a very basic controller where you can type in this URL after the, uh, at the web browser and it should call the controller. So I'm going to save the changes on this guy and go back into the test controller. Now in this test controller I'm going to add a new action. I want to return a string, and then it's going to have the word print message after it. So the index is the default. However, when I put slash print message, I'm going to get another message. Now I can return, as you can see, a view, which is a, a web page. However, I'm just going to embed the web page right here as a string. So I'm going to type in the string using HTML code. So very simply, I'm going to have a headline, which is an H1, and then I'm going to add a paragraph afterwards. So now I should be able to run this and get a new page. So let's go ahead and run it on Chrome. Now you notice when I run the program that we get an error. And so the URL no longer works like it did before. That's because we commented out the default router or the default controller. However, I can put in the word test. I still have nothing. If I put in slash print message, now I have the page that comes back. And so you can see that I've eliminated all default routes and now the test print message is working. So it is, re is repeating to the screen 
the HTML code, and you can see welcome is in H1 format. Let's go back into the route config and update this. So instead of saying sla test slash print message, we're going to change this slightly. So I'm going to erase print message and put in curly brackets another thing called action. So now putting in the curly brackets allows us to accept multiple URLs and not just the very specific one that we created a minute ago. You can still see that the default route doesn't work, but if I put in the word test, print message, I still get the welcome. What happens if I delete print message? Test still comes up with a default action. Okay, for the test controller, I would like you to put in some of your own. So you could just copy and paste print message, and let's change it to something else. Like for instance, if you said the word play, and then you put in your own custom message for play. Go ahead and try several of these and test them out to see if you can make your own custom routes and the uh, custom URL. However, the goal of a website is not to print strings like we have here. So let's go a little more sophisticated. What we really want to do is tell the controller to show one of these pages in the views section. So I'm going to add a new function up here near the top. So I'm going to type in the function as a action result property, and I'm going to name it test view, and I'm going to return something called a view. So it's going to look for an item called test view. So just a comment to see what this actually will do. It's going to return test view dot cs html. That's C sharp HTML combined, and uh, that will default to the name that I've given it. So let's go into the uh, views area. You notice there's a section called test. So that probably corresponds to the test controller. Let's go ahead and add something in that folder called a view. So I'm going to name this thing called test view. I'm going to leave it empty with no model. That means there's no actual data on this page. And I'm going to use the layout page. Let's click add. All right, so here's our first page. We have a little bit of code to work with and something called the view bag title. Go ahead and put some HTML code in here. Do it to customize the way you like it. So I'm going to show you an H1, an H2, an unordered list, and list items. So now we should be able to run the code. Let's see what it looks like. So you can see that it automatically shows me a test slash test view. If I just choose test, it's going to choose uh, a default action. If I put in test print message, it's still working. And if test test view shows up, I can use both lowercase and uppercase letters, as you can see. So here's what I'd like you to do now as kind of a challenge and practice, is create some more views. So I've created one called error message. And you can see that it says, I'm sorry, Dave, but I cannot do that. So make several of these until you get the practice down to figure out how you can add a controller and a view associated with it. Just very quickly, I'll show you how I did mine. So test has an error message, and also in the controller, I have a new function called error message. So make something similar to that and practice it until it feels natural. Next, I'd like to show you how to put in parameters so you can take a custom name or number and put it into the URL. So let's make a new uh, controller event called welcome. So I'm going to accept two different parameters. One is a string, we'll call it name, and the other is an integer called numTime. Optionally, if the user does not include a value, we can give it a default value of one. So this does not always execute. It's only executed equals one if the user forgot to put in the number of times. So what I would like to do now is print a string out that shows hello and then the person's name, and then the number of times equals the number of times. So we're just echoing back to the user what they gave us. However, there's a problem here. First of all, I have action result as my data type, so it's expecting a web page. I'm just returning a string, so let's change that to string. All right, so I get the application running, and let's go ahead and go into the test controller, and I'm going to test out welcome. And it says here, hello, number of times is one. So you can see that I did not provide a name, but it did provide a 1 as a default. 
Now, in the URL format, you can put a question mark and then the parameter name equals something. So let's put in hello bill. You can see the bill shows up here. Looks like I need to put some spaces in. So I could also add to it uh, and percent and then the second parameter, which is num times, equals 99. And now I've got 99 here. So go ahead and change these to any name and number you like. Now there is a risk when you start accepting user input and then just repeating it back to the screen. So HTTP utility is something I'm going to add now. And it will allow us to encode the strings. So that way, if there's any nefarious or bad code that is sent by the user, it will be converted into standard HTML and avoid security risks. I'm also going to add a space in then before the name. Now I'd like to fix the default router here. And let's bring back what we had earlier. So I'm going to take the uh, commented out router and put it back down at the bottom. So the bottom, I think, executes last, so that way it has its control. And let's do the uncomment. The reason why I want to include this is because now we're going to have the default action. So controller action ID is the default of what the URL is expecting. Okay, so now that's back in place. Let's go back into our test controller and add a new action. So let's take welcome and modify it. So I'm going to copy welcome and paste it. And let's name it as welcome to. Instead of num times, since we are working with this default controller or default route, I'm going to change this to ID. So now I have the uh, name plus the ID being printed here. And remember, welcome to is the new uh, route. So now you can see when I run the program, the default route is now working and I can see the first three pages. However, let's go back and see what test and welcome to will give us. So welcome to says, hey, welcome. And now I'm going to put in the name. So I can put in Perry and his ID is one. So you're already two thirds of the way there when it comes to the MVC design pattern. We've looked at views and controllers. That's the V and the C. The M is the model, which we haven't looked at yet. So you're two thirds of the way there. How hard can it be? So in the next few videos, we're going to add some data to our application, and then you'll see a full MVC pattern.